with Shakespeare and then we'll make sure that everything's working and then we're gonna get right into it so that we can get it over with excellent I just gotta make sure I'm gonna be very quiet so that I can hear if there's music <laughs> I can't tell Come on, do an orchestral hit or something. Up, 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 I hear it. Excellent. All right, we're going. We're going. All right, okay. So, <laughs> we're finishing up today. The Dark Lady Sonnet. Um, background... Dark Lady being, uh, oh, microphone cord. Uh, Dark Lady being doesn't wear makeup and therefore doesn't powder her face into ghostliness. Um, so natural. She's got dark eyes. She's got dark hair. Could be taken a different way. That's up to whoever is reading. Um, and most of it was basically um, uh, the writer apparently being a William. Um, in love with a prostitute or at least um one who uh, a lady who gets around and apparently isn't very attractive but loves her anyway so that's cute question mark so uh we're gonna get right into it with um number 141 50 41 41 41 141 blah <sighs> so i hope that's it okay in faith I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors note. But tis my heart that loves what they despise, who in despite of view is pleased to dote. Nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted, nor tender feeling to base touches prone, nor taste nor smell desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone. But my five wits nor my five senses can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man, thy proud heart's slave and vassal wretch to be. Only my plague thus far I count my gain, that she that makes me sin awards me pain. So yeah, basically, uh, you're uh, incredibly full of errors, physically, and um, yeah, in faith I do not love thee with mine eyes. I don't love thee by seeing you, for they in thee, for they, say, they see in thee, a thousand errors note. So I see in you a thousand errors. But it's my heart that loves what they despise. So my heart loves what my eyes despise, who in despite of you is pleased to dote. So my heart, despite of the view of it, is pleased to dote upon you. Nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted. So um, 
you're oops sorry when you speak uh i don't exactly like what i hear <laughs> the sound of it nor tender feeling to base touches prone I don't like the feel of you, nor taste, nor smell desire to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone. So the taste of you, the smell of you, so any of the senses, I don't really like you, but my heart loves you. But my five wits, nor my five senses can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee. So what I can see and smell and taste and hear, my heart loves anyway. Who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man. Who, okay, dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee, who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man, thy proud heart's slave and vassal wretch to be. Slave and vassal wretch to be. Who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man. That one I'm a little ish on. Thy proud heart's slave and vassal wretch. Wait, okay. My five wits nor my five senses can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee, who leaves unswayed the likeness of a man, thy proud heart slave and vassal wretch to be. I'm not quite sure how that line kind of connects with the rest of it. I'm probably reading it incorrectly, but thy proud heart slave and vassal wretch to be. So I am your proud heart's slave and vassal wretch. Only my plague thus far I count my gain that she that makes me sin awards me pain. Okay, I'm going to read that, that last part and try to get it. I don't know. Only my plague thus far, I count my gain, that she that makes me sin awards me pain. So yeah, so, um, only my plague thus far, I, okay, so only my plague being plagued in loving you is the gain that I have, um, because she that makes me sin, um, uh, also awards me pain. So <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, not a great situation but you know tis tis what tis i guess that was number 141 moving right along 142 love is my sin and thy dear virtue hate hate of my sin grounded on sinful loving oh but with mine compare thou thine own state and thou shalt find it merits not reproving or if it do not from those lips of thine that have profaned their scarlet ornaments and sealed false bonds of love as oft as mine robbed others beds Gosh, darn it, sorry. I'm apparently too close to my desk. Okay, sorry. Uh, that have profaned their scarlet ornaments and sealed false bonds of love as oft as mine, robbed others' beds revenues of their rents. Be it lawful, I love thee as thou lovest those whom thine eyes woo as mine importune thee. Root pity in thy heart that when it grows, thy pity may deserve to pity be. If thou dost seek to have what thou dost hide, by self-example mayst thou be denied. All right, um, so love is my sin, and thy dear virtue, your virtue is hate, and hate of my sin grounded on sinful loving. Um, so you hate me for loving you, potentially? Oh, but with mine compare thou thine own state. So with my state compare your own, and, th and you will find uh, it that you can't, you can't reprove me assuming it's somewhat similar, or if it does, not from your lips, that have profaned their scarlet ornaments, who have um, used them in such a way, have profaned them, and sealed false bonds of love as oft as mine, <laughs> who have um, uh, made promises in love as often as they have as often as mine have to you, but in a different way, robbed others' beds revenues of their rents. Um, yep, continuing on with that. Be it lawful, I love thee, as thou lovest those whom thine eyes woo as mine importune thee. So, so, be it lawful, so be it as, I assume, again, comparing the two situations, um, be it lawful that I love you as you love those who you woo um, as I um, attempt to woo you. Rip pity in thy heart, have pity on me, that when it grows, thy pity may deserve to pity be. So that 
Hang on. Thy pa oh my gosh, I didn't put the thing up. Oh my, well, I mean, that's probably fine, but ah, I'm so sorry. Um, where's the thing? See, I was, I, I was all thrown off. Just because of, just because of last time. We're crossing our fingers for no frat boy. <laughs> uh, frat boy pickup line poems that talk about himself in the third person. That would be great if we could just not have that. I'm just hoping for that. So far, it's not too bad. It's, it's subtle. So we're, we're on our way. Anyway, uh, root pity in thy heart, uh, have, have pity on me to some degree that when it grows, thy pity may deserve to pity be that when you pity me, pity may deserve pity be that when you pity me, you will also, and when you also deserve pity, um, you will also deserve it. Did I say the same exact thing? I don't know. If thou dost seek to have what thou dost hide, by self-example mayst thou be denied. Okay, so I, I assume if, thou, if you seek to have what you hide, by your own example, may you also be denied. So I'm looking at it as potentially... She doesn't uh, like to be seen with him, so she hides it, and so, and or, she denies him. Yeah, so she 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 hides her um, uh, what the word is that I'm I can't think of right now. Her excursion, her antics. She hides her antics. Um, I do. I do think it's that, like, she she wants, but she hides it. And therefore, by, by your own example and by hiding, by me being denied because you are hiding it, may you also be denied. Uh, question mark? Hopefully, maybe. Excellent. Uh, that was 142. Moving on to 143. Lo, as a careful housewife runs to catch one of her feathered creatures broke away, sets down her babe and makes all swift dispatch in pursuit of the thing she would have stay. Whilst her neglected child holds her in chase, cries to catch her whose busy care is bent to follow that which flies before her face. Not... I'm not prizing? Not prizing her poor infant's discontent. So runst thou after that which flies from thee, whilst I thy babe chase thee far, chase thee afar behind. But if thou catch thy hope, turn back to me, and play the mother's part, kiss me, be kind. So will I pray that thou mayst have thy will, if thou turn back, and my loud crying still. Uh, a little bit of name dropping, but it was okay, it's okay. We're gonna check Trusty Dusty Book just to make sure that that's the correct word that that says, because... I could not quite tell, because the the end looks like a U. Uh, okay. Um, we are. Where are we? There it is. Uh, number one forty-three, I believe. Excellent. Okay. One forty-three. Uh, ba, ba, ba. not prizing. Yeah, not prizing. Excellent. Bookmark. Awesome. So, going back. As a careful housewife runs to catch one of her chickens who got away, she sets down the child and runs quickly to pursue it. Excellent. <laughs> um, her poor child. Runs after her and cries, trying to get her. She's too busy. She's trying to get the chicken. Chicken. <laughs> Always making mischief. Um, she try yeah, tries to get the chicken. It's flying away from her. She's not paying attention to her poor child who's calling after her, who wants her. So do you uh, run after what flies from you. 
while I am trying to chase after you and catch you. But if you do get what you want, still, turn back to me. Kiss me, be kind. So will I pray that thou mayst have thy will. So that's how I pray that I, I hope that you will have your your will, William. Good lord. You'll, you'll have me if you turn back. And I'm still... So will I pray that thou mayst have thy will if thou turn back in my loud crying still. Yeah. That, yeah. So I pray that you will you will have me that you'll turn back to my loud cryings and chasings after you. Excellent. Okie dokie. Moving on. Number one four. That was number one forty three. On to one forty four. We're making quick work. We're gonna be done in very very quick time, which is good. And then we're done with it. It's not too. It hasn't. It hasn't been too bad so far. I think we're. I think we're past the worst of it. So all right. Number one forty four. Two loves I have of comfort and despair, which like two spirits do suggest me still. The better angel is a man right fair, the worser spirit a woman colored ill. To win me soon to hell, my female evil tempteth my better angel from my side, and would corrupt my saint to be a devil, wooing his purity with her foul pride. And whether that my angel be turned fiend, suspect I may, yet not directly tell. But being both from me, both to each friend, I guess one angel in another's hell. Yet this shall I ne'er know, but live in doubt, till my bad angel fire my good one out. Okay, interesting. Two loves I have of comfort and despair. Two loves I have of comfort and despair. Okay, so two loves I have of comfort and despair. The two loves being the comfort as well as the despair, it's... I assume it's like it's the one love split into two where I have that comfort, but I'm also despairing because I'm in the situation that the rest of the poems have been uh, speaking of, which like two spirits do suggest me still. So both of them are saying like the one is, oh, well, it's it's good. It's good now. And I like having it. Great. Awesome. And the other one's, well, she doesn't want me and this hurts and all that. Yeah. The better angel is a man right fair, the worser spirit a woman colored ill. Uh, so yeah, a better angel, a fair man, worser spirit, a colored ill woman. Um, so yeah, so the, uh, the woman tempting to sin. To win me soon to hell, my female evil tempteth my better angel from my side. Uh, so... <laughs> um, yeah. Lustful temptation, and would corrupt my saint to be a devil, wooing his purity with her foul pride. Uh, and and going back, the that has been, I think it's been somewhat of a theme, at least it's been in a couple of the more recent poems, about the pride of the woman. And whether that my angel be turned fiend, suspect I may, yet not directly tell. And whether that angel be turned into a fiend, I may suspect it, but I don't know quite yet, so it's still up in the air. But being both from me, both to each friend, and I think that might go back um, uh, to the 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 uh, talking about his his friend, where it might be his friend is like that pure spiritual love, um, and him being the more the just straight physical. Uh, so, but both be, but being both from me, so it's the, basically the heart and the other, other things, uh, both to each friend, I guess one angel in another's hell. I also think that might be like the, my angel in the, the heart of the woman. It does. It goes back to some of the other ones and her being the hell. Yet this shall I ne'er know, but live in doubt, till my bad angel fire my good one out. So, I'll never really know which, what the actual situation is, whether it is for good or for evil. I'll always be doubtful until, um, and again, being that, um, and, and I do, I think that might be like a historical thing where the, um, 
the the female versus male situation, the female being <laughs> the evil one. But yeah, still until the bad angel um fires out the uh the love basically. So once that love gets worn out, potentially. At least that's the way I'm gonna look at it. So that was 144, moving on to 145. Excellent. Those loves that those loves. Those lips that love's own hand did make breathed forth the sound that said, I hate, to me that languished for her sake. But when she saw my woeful state, straight in her heart did mercy come, chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in giving gentle doom, and taught it thus anew to greet. I hate, she altered with an end, that followed it as gentle day doth follow night, who like a fiend from heaven to hell is flown away. I hate, from hate away she threw, and saved my life, saying, not you. Okay. Those lips that love's own hand did make, breathed forth the sound that said, I hate, to me that languished for her sake. Okay. So love is capitalized. I'm gonna, uh, this is probably a bad idea. I'm gonna check trusty dusty book. I'm not gonna look at anything else except for. And it could be another one of those things where, where is it? 145. Da, 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 da. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, ba, 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 da, ba, ba. Okay. It doesn't say anything about that, so I'm just going to go with my theory. So, the going back to the whole theme where... I mean, you're not the prettiest, but my eyes see you as the most beautiful because I love you. So those lips that love's own hand did make. So I see those lips through love. That sort of a thing. Uh, breathed forth, but uh, love's own hand did make. Breathed forth a sound. I hate. Or... Or it could just be like like a, a deified sort of a thing. Where it's just love being the deity. Yeah, we'll just go with that for now. Breathed forth a sound that said, I hate. To me that languished for her sake. Or, no, hang on. Nope, 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 nope. I, was, I think I was correct the first time. So, uh, or, this is the way I'm going to look at it. So, the eyes, the lips that I see through the veil of love, um breathed forth a sound that said I hate to me that to me so basically she's saying she hates me though I languish for her but then she saw how pitiful I was straight in her heart did mercy did mercy come she yeah she had pity on me chiding that tongue that ever sweet was used in giving gentle doom and so she felt bad she chided that tongue that still is sweet, uh, was used in giving gentle doom, uh, spoke those gentle words, and yet so, so, hor so horrible, <laughs> taught it thus anew to greet. So she, she turned it around. I hate, she altered with an end, she altered it, that followed it as gentle day doth follow night. So something followed hate, following as gentle day follows night, who, like a fiend from heaven to hell, is flown away. So, uh, the hatred went away. I hate, from hate away she threw. From hate away she threw. So, the phrase I hate, from hate away she threw. She threw away the hate and saved my life, saying, not you. So, my life, my life is her. And she saved me by saying, I don't hate you. Excellent. And then there was something in Trusty Dusty book saying the whole Anne Hathaway, his wife, um, there's like the little couplet at the end that says, I hate from hate away. Hathaway. <laughs> she threw. Interesting. Um, yeah. I think that one's good. That one, I think that one went pretty well. That was number 145. On to 146. All right. 
poor soul, the center of my sinful earth, fooled by those rebel powers that thee array, why dost thou pine within and suffer dearth, painting thy outward walls so costly gay? Why so large cost, having so short a lease, dost thou upon thy fading mansion spend? Shall worms, inheritors of this excess, eat up thy charge? Is this thy body's end? Then, soul, live thou upon thy servant's loss, and let that pine to aggravate thy store, by terms divine in selling hours of dross. Within be fed, without be rich no more. So shalt thou feed on death that feeds on men, and, death once dead, there's no more dying then. Okay. Poor soul, the center of my sinful earth, fooled by those rebel powers that thee array. Okay. So poor soul, poor lady, poor woman, the center of my sinful earth, you're the center of my sinful uh, world. Center, yeah. My world revolves around you, at least my, th that one. Fooled by those rebel powers that the array. So I do, I feel like that's, again, referencing the other suitors, we shall say. So fooled by those rebel powers that the array, why do you pine within you and suffer painting thy outward walls so co costly gay? So again, painting thy outward walls, so putting on the makeup or putting on a smile, question mark. So yeah, so why do you suffer within, but um, but put on a facade without? Why so large cost? Having so short a lease, dost thou upon thy fading mansion spend? Having so short a lease, dost thou? Okay, so why? So your fate, <laughs> your fading mansion, your body and life. I don't know if you can hear that. Got some weather. Um, I should almost check on that. <laughs> One second, let me just check. Um, so yeah, why, why so large cost having so short a lease? So, okay, sorry. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Awesome. Okay. All right. If I have to run, I have to run. Just be aware. Okay. Why so large cost having so short a lease dost thou upon thy fading man mansion spend? So why do you spend so much uh, having so short of a lease, a time here, life, uh, upon your fading mansion? <laughs> You're getting old. <laughs> uh, why do you spend so much? Um, so I do. I think it's I think it's more of like a, a mental emotional cost sort of thing but we'll see shall worms inheritors of this excess eat up thy charge so once your body is in the ground worms will eat up whatever's been spent um because they're they're going to inherit whatever is in excess is this thy body's end then soul live thou upon thy servant's loss, and let that pine to aggravate thy store. Then soul, again, uh, woman, my soul, live thou upon thy servant's loss. So live that I will miss you, <laughs> because I am your servant, and I, it will be a loss for me to lose you. <laughs> and let that pine, and let that pine to aggravate thy store. By terms divine, by terms divine and selling hours of dross, or this is that description. Oh, oh, <laughs> see, this one's like kind of, kind of sweet a little bit. And let that pine to aggravate thy store. <sighs> so then, soul, live thou upon thy servant's loss, and let that pine to aggravate thy store. So the pining of within aggravate thy, thy store of bodily, worldly possession um, by terms divine in selling hours of dross. I have to make sure I am 
understanding correctly. <laughs> okay, so dross being just basically rubbish. So by divine terms in... Oh, okay, so by terms divine, by selling hours of rubbish. So instead of putting, putting your time and your attention to rubbish um, shenanigans that make you not feel good inside, um, instead be with me uh, who loves you and you will be fed within you won't you won't be painting yourself anymore you don't need to do that anymore I love you regardless so shalt thou feed on death that feeds on men and death once dead there's no more dying then and I think that might kind of go back a little bit to the more spiritual love um, sonnets where it's so you're basically cheating death because being mine, I'm going to write you. <laughs> I'm going to write about you and you're going to live on forever in that. So you will feed on death. Death feeds on men. And in that, in that respect, you will then kill death and you will no longer die. Haha. -ha. <laughs> that was 146 on to 147. Okay. My love is as a fever, longing still for that which longer nurseth the disease, feeding on that which doth preserve the ill, the uncertain sickly appetite to please. My reason, the physician to my love, angry that his prescriptions are not kept, hath left me, and I desperate now approve, desire is death which physic did accept. Past cure I am, now reason is past care, and frantic mad with evermore unrest. My thoughts and my discourse as madmen's are, at random from the truth vainly expressed. For I have sworn thee fair, and thought thee bright, who art as black as hell, as dark as night. Ooh, that got a little uh, <laughs> dark there at the end. Literally. And, yeah. My love is as a fever. It's longing still for that which longer nurseth the disease. So, yeah. It longs, my love longs for that which continues the disease. Feeding on that which doth preserve the ill, it, the, the love and fever, feeds on what keeps me ill. The uncertain, sickly appetite to please. So it pleases the appetite, but it's sickly and unsearched. <laughs> all bad things, all bad things. My reason, the physician to my love. So if my reason, my, my reasoning skills should doctor that love and I should be able to tell myself this is not good however angry <laughs> my reason the physician to my love is angry that his prescriptions are not kept so reason is angry and so it left it's gone uh, I have no more reason left and I desperate now approve uh, desire is death which physic did accept Ooh, okay it is getting dark and I'm, I'm desperate now at this point. I have no more reason. My love is killing me. Kind of. Uh, and now I'm desperate, so I approve uh, the desire of death, uh, which physic, the reason, accepted. Um, did not allow. I'm past cure. Um, my reason is past caring. Uh, frantic mad with ever more unrest. I'm crazy with continuing um, inability to rest slash unrest. My thoughts and my discourse as madmen's are. Uh, my thoughts and my speech are both unreasonable. <laughs> at random, oh, yeah, at random from the truth vainly expressed. So, at, at random from the truth vainly expressed. I feel like that could be taken a couple of different ways. At random from the truth vainly expressed. 
So yeah, so it's it's apart from whatever truth there is. It's random from the truth. So it could it could it could be either it's it's random from the truth and also expressed in vain, or it's at random from what the truth is and the tr when the truth is expressed, it's in vain, kind of. At random from the truth, vainly expressed. Kind of. Oh, and and or at random from the truth, vainly expressed. Always, always coming back to the same that same truth of love. Uh, the truth is vainly expressed. So my love is vainly expressed, and my thoughts are randomly coming off of that, and that's all I can think and speak of. For I have sworn thee fair and thought thee bright. So I have. I've sworn that you are, are beautiful and bright, but you're actually black as hell and dark as night. Wow. That's like, that does, that just like kind of hits. So yeah, that was that one. Intense. Uh, number, that was 147. Moving right along. Making good, making very good time. Uh, number 148. Oh me, what eyes hath love put in my head, which have no correspondence with true sight? Or if they have, where is my judgment fled that censures falsely what they see aright? If that be fair, whereon my false eyes dote, what means the world to say it is not so? If it be not, then love doth well denote love's eye is not so true as all men's. No, how can it? Oh, how can love's eye be true, that is so vexed with watching and with tears? No marvel then thou, sorry, no marvel then though I mistake my view. The sun itself sees not till heaven clears. O cunning love, with tears thou keepest, thou keepest me blind, lest eyes well seeing thy foul faults should find. Okay, O oh me, what eyes hath love put in my head? So, my eyes are seeing through the veil of love which have no correspondence with true sight, and they do not see truly. Uh, or if they have, where is my judgment fled? So if my eyes are seeing correctly, where then is my judgment that censures falsely what they see aright? Okay, so if I'm seeing correctly, why is my judgment um, uh, seeing differently or depicting differently what my eyes are seeing correctly? If that be fair, whereon my false eyes dote, if if you are, if you are actually beautiful, um, what my false eyes are seeing, false eyes are doting upon, what means the world to say it is not so? Yeah, so if, if, if you are fair, if you are actually fair, and it's not just my false eyes. Uh, why is the world telling me that you are not? If you're not, then love doth well denote love's eye doth well. Love doth well denote love's eye is not so true as all. Mm, ooh, okay. Love doth well denote love's eye is not so true as all men's. Okay. If you're not fair, then love does doth well denote. Sorry. It's good for love to note that um, the eye of love does not see as truly as uh, the world's does, as everyone else does, that objective viewpoint. So no, how, how could it? How could it be truer than what that objective view? Oh, how can love's eye be true that is so vexed with watching and with tears? So how can an eye seeing through that veil of love uh, when it is so vexed <laughs> with watching and crying. No marvel then, though I no marvel then, though I mistake my view. It's it's not a wonder that I'm mistaken in what I see. The sun itself sees not till heaven clears. So, yeah. So until the clouds part, uh, the sun, the sun doesn't see either. O oh, cunning love, with tears. Thou keepest me blind, I'm blinded by by crying. 
lest eyes well seeing thy foul faults should find lest the eye uh, like my my eyes actually seeing truly i'll find all of your foul faults otherwise i won't so that's why love blinds it blinds the eyes so that faults cannot be seen yeah so love is blind here's the poem that was number 148 on to number 149 Canst thou, O cruel, say I love thee not, when I against myself with thee partake? Do I not think on thee, when I forgot am of myself, all tyrant for thy sake? Who hateth thee, that I do call my friend? On whom frownst thou, that I do fawn upon? Nay, if thou lowerst on me, do I not spend revenge upon myself with present moan? What merit do I in myself respect, that is so proud thy service to despise? When all my best doth worship thy defect, commanded by the motion of thine eyes. But love hate on, for now I know thy mind, those that can see thou lovest, and I am blind. Blind again! Ugh, love is blind. Ugh. Sorry. Okay. Canst thou, O cruel, say I love thee not? How, cruel person, cruel love, say that I do not love you? When I, against my better judgment, uh, partake with thee, spend time with thee, be with thee, love thee. Do I not think on thee when I forgot am of myself? Do I not think of you when I forgot, when I forgot am of myself? It is. Some of these are just, are, are weird wordings. Do I not think on thee when I forgot am of myself? All tyrant for thy sake. So yeah, uh, I think um, it's, I think of you above my own self. I take, er, yeah, I put you above myself. All tyrant for thy sake. Uh, I think so. We're going to go with that. Who hateth thee that I do call my friend? Who hateth thee that I do call my friend? Okay. And... I think it's just saying it again, that repetition, that poetical repetition. Who hates you that I call my friend? I can't, I can't hate you. So who are you thinking is hating you? You're my friend. Friend. On whom frownst thou that I do fawn upon? On, wait. Yeah. On whom frownst thou that I do fawn upon? On whom frownst thou... That seems like it's saying, uh, who are you frowning upon? On whom frowns thou? Yeah. You frown upon whom? That I do find. Oh! That one. Hang on. Nay, if thou lowerst on me, do I not spend revenge upon myself with present moan? Who hateth thee that I do call my friend? On whom frowns thou that I do fawn upon? That's a, that's a weird line. That's a weird line right there because it seems like it goes two different directions. On whom frowns thou that I do fawn upon. But it, Yeah, that's a weird one. Nay, if thou, if thou lowerst on me, do I not spend revenge upon myself at present moan? So when, when you treat me poorly, do I not punish myself? Uh, what merit do I in myself respect that is so proud thy service to despise? Merit do I in myself. So what good in myself can I, can I respect <laughs> um, that is too proud to be of service to you, that dis would despise being in service to you? Um, yeah. When all my best doth worship thy defect commanded by the motion of thine eyes everything good in me all of the best in me worships even that which is defective in you commanded by the motion of thine eyes uh because whatever way you look uh i am commanded by it but love hate on for now i know thy mind those that can see 
those that can see thou lovest, and I am blind. Oh, okay. So love, my love. So first you're cruel, but now you're my love. But love, hate on, continue hating me, for now I know what you're thinking. Those that can see you love. Oh, oh, that was really sad. So the ones who can see everything that's wrong with you, uh, you love. And I am blind. So those that can see, you love. But I'm blind, and therefore you do not love. That's sad. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, that was number 149. <laughs> Um, and, yeah. Yeah. On to 150. I, uh, I hope that this doesn't end really sadly. Just, like, it was. All the, all the first ones were super nice and sweet and good for the most part. And, yeah, no, it's just going to be sad. We'll see. We'll see if we continue on with the other Shakespeare after this. Uh, number 150. Oh, from what power hast thou this powerful might? With insufficiency my heart to sway. To make me give the lie to my true sight, and swear that brightness doth not grace the day. Whence hast thou this becoming of things ill, that in the very refute, refuse of thy deeds there is much strength and warranties of skill, that in my mind thy worst all best exceeds? Who taught thee how to make me love thee more, the more I hear and see just cause of hate? O oh, thou I, O oh, though I love what others do abhor, what others thou shouldst not abhor my state? Sorry, did I read that incorrectly? Hang on. Oh, though I love what others do abhor, what with others thou shouldst not abhor my state. If thy unworthiness raised love in me, more worthy I to be beloved of thee. Okay. Oh, from what power hast thou this powerful might? Where do you get your draw, your appeal to me, with insufficiency, my heart to sway? Um, even though... My heart is insufficient to sway you. Right. To make me give the lie to my true sight. To <laughs> make me give that veil of love uh, to the truth of my view. And swear that brightness doth not grace the day. To make me give the lie to my true sight and swear that brightness doth not grace a day um uh, so this could go a few different ways it could be that uh going back to other other sonnets where the day does not have enough brightness to compare to the brightness that you have or it could be going to the dark lady situation where um, the the pasty, ghosty, white, bright face uh, being beauty, but now like the darkness, um, the natural, uh, non-bright <laughs> is what graces uh, the day, question mark. We'll go with both. And move along. Whence hast thou this becoming of things ill, that in the very refuse of thy deeds there is much strength and warranties of skill, that in my mind thy worst all best exceeds? From where have you this becoming? Whence hast thou this becoming of things ill? Oh, yeah, uh, becoming being like, oh, it's very becoming on you. <laughs> So, you make ill things, bad things, uh, look good. <laughs> that in the very refuse of thy deeds, there's much strength and warranties of skill. So, in your trashy actions, to put it modernly, uh, there is much strength and warranties of skill. An interesting way to put it. That in my mind, thy worst all best exceeds. So all of your worst is better than the best. In my mind, anyway. 
once I saw that, it was, it was, it was like, it was the very refuge that I needed. Or just not the, uh, there's much strength and warranties of skill just in general. Um, a general sort of, um, description. Who taught you how to make me love you more? The more that, the more I s hear and see, uh, things that should make me hate you. Oh, though I love what others do abhor, I love what others uh, despise. Uh, with others, thou shouldst not abhor my state. With others, thou shouldst not abhor my state. So, even though... I love what should be despised. You should not join others in in despising my situation and yourself. Kind of. It, it, that sort of connection in despi despising her and it would also be a, a, dis a <laughs> I'm trying to make a noun out of that word and I can't figure it out. Um, but yeah, that, that, that connection, do not abhor, do not abhor me and my love of you. If your unworthiness somehow could make me love you, could still allow me to love you more worthy would I be if you actually loved me back. Sad. Okay. That was number 150 on to 151. Ooh, we're going to get done super quickly. Number 151. Love is too young to know what conscience is, yet who knows not, conscience is born of love. Then, gentle cheater, urge not my amiss, lest guilty of my faults thy sweet self prove. For thou betraying me, I do betray my nobler part to my gross body's treason. My soul doth tell my body that he may triumph in love. Flesh stays no farther reason. But rising at thy name doth point out thee as his triumphant prize. Proud of this pride, he is contented thy poor drudge to be, to stand in thy affairs, full by thy side. No want of conscience hold it that I call her love, for whose dear love I rise and fall. Okay, so again, the distinction between the spiritual pure love and the baser physical lo love. Love is too young to know what conscience is. Love is too naive. Uh, to have that analytical um, anal analytical thing to analyze um, what is being loved yet who knows not yet who knows not conscience is born of love interesting yet who knows not conscience is Love is too young to know what conscience is, yet who knows not conscience is born of love. Oh, okay, sort of like a hindsight's 2020. So, yeah, yeah. So, that sort of honeymoon period, that love that does not question, only sees the good. Uh, it's too naive to know that conscience, that analytical portion that mentality but who doesn't know that conscience is born of love the conscience being looking back and seeing after the fact after the love um how it actually was then gentle cheater urge not my amiss my my amiss lest guilty of my of my faults thy sweet self prove then gentle cheater Urge not. I'm just going to quick look at trusty dusty book because it's been okay so far. <sighs> 151. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, then a gentle cheater, uh, gentle being <laughs> sweet, fair, love, uh, cheater is what it is. Urge not my amiss. Don't, um, don't accuse me of faults or bring up mine, lest, though I might be guilty of mine, or, yeah, oh, oh, okay. Lest guilty of my faults thy sweet self prove. Lest you prove as guilty of my faults as I am. I think that sentence came out correctly. For thou betraying me, for thou betraying me, I do betray my nobler part to my gross body's treason. So, because you betray me, I am betraying my nobler part, my pure, my heart, my pure spiritual love self to the treason of my, my base bodily instincts. My soul doth tell my body that he may triumph in love. My heart, my soul, tells that other part of me that he can triumph in love. Just go with love. You'll find success there. But the flesh stays no farther reason. The flesh cannot be reasoned with. But rising at thy name doth point but rising at thy name doth point out thee as his triumphant prize. Yep. Yeah, that one's subtle. That one's subtle. I'll accept it, I guess. Uh, so yeah. Um, proud of this pride. So yeah, so ye, uh, rising at your name, ye, you are the, the prize of my lesser uh, being. Proud of this pride. He's contented thy poor drudge to be. He's, 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 He's good. He's good. He's good to go. Um, he's willing to do that. Hello, hello. How's it going? We're we're getting close to finishing up Shakespeare. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a little questionable, but it's it's it hasn't been as bad as last time. So that's that's good. Um Yeah. So my uh baser self is happy to be um, with you, though you do not love me, to, to stand with you, though you, um, are not faithful to me, uh, no want of conscience, hold it, don't jinx, oh gosh, yeah, they, okay, my bad, oh no, I hope I haven't, I hope I haven't, oh no, we'll see, we'll see, uh, uh, no want of conscience, hold it, that I call her love, no want of conscience hold it that I call her love for whose dear love I rise and fall. So back to the conscience. No want of conscience hold it that I call her love. So yeah, so it's a funky, it's a funky last sentence. No want of conscience hold it. Because no want of being that there is conscience there. Hold it. No want of conscience. Hold it that I call her love. Oh. That I call her love who, for whose dear love I rise and fall. And we'll put that as a, um, the, the, the servitude um, analogy. We'll go with that. No want of conscience. Hold it that I call her love. Uh, it's one. It's one of those lines where it's like I like I'm understanding it in my mind, but I cannot translate it properly. The want of conscience. So, um, I do. I think. I think it's kind of saying that. She, going back to the, she's not. Um, um, happy to be seen with him. <laughs> so she's got her conscience, um, which comes after the love sort of situation. And yet he's still in that love, uh, situation. Uh, charming. 
Uh, that was 151. On to 152. Ah, it zoomed in a little bit. And out. Okay. 152. In loving thee, thou knowest I am forsworn, but thou art twice forsworn to me love swearing. In act thy bed vow broke and new faith torn, in vowing new hate after new love bearing. But why of two oaths breach do I accuse thee when I break twenty? I am perjured most, for all my vows are oaths but to, but to misuse thee, and all my honest faith in thee is lost. For I have sworn deep oaths of thy deep kindness, oaths of thy love, thy truth, thy constancy, and to enlighten thee give eyes to blindness, or make them swear against the thing they see. For I have sworn thee fair, more perjured I, to swear against the truth, so foul a lie. So basically, overall, general um, thing, uh, I have said so many good things about you, and they're all lies. So in loving thee, in loving you, uh, you know I, I, I have sworn, but thou art twice forsworn to me, love swearing. So I'm forsworn, in loving thee, you know I'm, I'm sworn to you. But you are twice forsworn to me love swearing so you've sworn love to me however you've sworn love elsewhere as well in in act uh you have broke that vow and and torn new faith um in vowing new hate after new love bearing so in so after having sworn after new love bearing so in finding a new love, you have now vowed hate toward me, I believe. But why of two oaths breach do I accuse thee when I break twenty? So why do I accuse you of breaking two oaths when I have broken, well, twenty, but many oaths? Um, I have, yes, I have lied the most. All your, all of my vows are oaths, but to misuse thee, misuse being, I think, uh, describing you incorrectly. All of my honest faith in thee is lost. I've lost all faith in you. All, um, thinking honestly of you, for I have sworn deep oaths of thy deep kindness. I've sworn that you are kind, that you love me, that you're truthful, that you're constant. Um, and to enlighten thee, give eyes to blindness. So again, going back to that, the dark lady thing, I have brightened you, um, and to enlighten thee, give eyes to blindness. Um, so yeah, to brighten you, give you beauty, uh, by blind, blind love. The veil of love brightens thee, uh, or make them, or make them swear against the thing they see, or... If my eyes do see how you actually are, they do not speak it uh, or believe it. I make them not do so. For I have sworn thee fair. I have sworn thee fair, uh, beautiful, um, uh, worthy, all of that. Uh, more dishonest am I to swear against the truth so foul a lie. I am more, even though as dishonest of you, as you have been to me, I am more dishonest to have sworn against uh, what's true about you and lying so foully that you're actually a good person. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so that's, that's number 152. Excellent. Moving right along. Uh, number 153. Cupid laid by his brand and fell asleep, a maid of Diane's this advantage found, and his love-kindling fire did quickly steep in a cold valley fountain of that ground, which borrowed from his holy fire of love a dateless lively heat, still to endure, and grew a seething bath which yet men prove, against strange maladies a sovereign cure. But at my mistress eye love's brand new fired, the boy for trial needs would touch my breast." A sick withal the help of bath desired, and thither hide a sad distempered guest, but found no cure. The bath for my help lies where Cupid got new fire, my mistress eyes. 
Okay, so, um, I think, uh, I think Diana was hunting in women <laughs> for goddess duties. Oops. Let me just quick check so I'm not saying incorrect things. Um, wild animals in the hunt. Um, yeah, those, those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, so... So, Cupid, arrows and love, laid by his laid by his brand and fell asleep. Oh, okay, laid by his his brand being branding with love. So he fell asleep. He's he he's right next to his thing, and a maid of Diane's this advantage found. So, a woman took advantage of this and uh, quickly steeped his love kindling fire in a cold valley fountain of that ground. Yeah, so, and I wonder if this is actually uh, based off of a mythological story. Um, so, uh, basically took took the brand and put it into a fountain um, or a pool and made that into a sort of potion, um, which borrowed from his holy fire of love a dateless, lively heat still to endure and grew a seething bath which yet men prove against strange maladies a sovereign cure yeah so there's a pool of potion love potion which yet men prove against strange maladies a sovereign cure So again, be somewhat, somewhat lovesick, I guess, but also, um, love being a cure, kind of. Yeah, but at my mistress' eye, love's brand new fired. Uh, the boy for trial needs would touch my breast, would touch my heart. Um. So at, at my mistress' eye, love's brand new fired. Okay, so, so yeah, I feel like that first part's kind of a, uh, like, basing it off of a mythological story. So now, in the present, uh, I see love newly fired in my mistress' eye. The boy for trial needs... I'm not quite sure for that one. I sick with all the help of bath desired. Oh, okay. So again, I thought that was like a little bit weird. Um, seeing love in my mistress eye. So, oh, hang on. Okay, <laughs> this one's a little bit twisty. So, at my mistress' eye, there's not love in the mistress's eye, kind of. But seeing my mistress' eye, love fired. Okay, I need to check Trusty Dusty book. It's been okay so far. Still, hopefully, not jinxing it. Um, so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who the boy is supposed to be, <laughs> to be honest. Trial. For 
So the boy, whoever that is for trial needs to test it out, would touch my heart. I mean, would it would that just be Cupid? Question mark? Being the little cherub? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Towards the bottom. It, okay, okay. Yeah. I sick with all the help of bath desired. So love should cure. So I'm 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 sick. I am I'm lonely or whatever other things love is supposed to cure. The help of that bath is desired. And so there I went, a sad, distempered guest. I I, I went to I went to um the fount of love. Sad and yeah, un, unfit and sick. But unfortunately, there was no cure for me. The bath for my health um, lies where Cupid got new fire, my mistress' eyes. Okay, um, so then I do, I feel like that's going, what helps me, the bath that helps me, lies where Cupid got new fire. So I'm guessing that's going to be that physical um, thing rather than the, so yeah, so like the actual, the fount of love, ooh, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So the the pool, the fount of love, is that spiritual pure love, whereas this new love, Cupid's new fire from my mistress eyes, is the baser love. So I'm sick in spiritual pure love because it's not returned, but I get a little help in other ways and we'll end that there 153 on to 154 and then we're finished with <laughs> questionable shakespeare 154 the little love god lying once asleep laid by his side his heart in flaming brand whilst many nymphs that vowed chaste life to keep came tripping by but in her maiden hand the fairest votary took up that fire which many legions of true hearts had warmed and so the general of hot desire was sleeping by a virgin hand disarmed. This brand she quenched in a cool well by, which from love's fire took heat perpetual, growing a bath and healthful remedy for men diseased. But I, my mistress thrall, came there for cure, and this by that I prove, loves are, loves are heats water, water cools not love. Sorry, let me check that. Love's fire. Love's fire heats water water cools not love so again poetic repetition and i i did looking at the thing it is a greek mythological um story it's cupid falls asleep with his brand the nymphs of diana um diana was a virgin goddess a uh, goddess of childbirth so her nymphs her virgin nymphs um vowed to vowed chaste, chasteness in life, came by, the fairest, took up the brand, um, which had warmed legions of true hearts, uh, and so the general of hot desire, Cupid, was sleeping, uh, and disarmed by a virgin hand, haha, -ha. this brand she quenched, oh, oh, interesting, so the, the brand, being the actual brand, um, or an, an, analogically, um, cooled the brand in a well nearby, and then that well took on those properties from the brand, so which from love's fire took heat perpetual, growing a bath and helpful and healthful remedy for men diseased. So. So I guess I, I don't. It's been a while for the Greek stuff, and I'm not sure I ever really got into Cupid. But Cupid, again, maybe being that... Oh, okay. So going back to the the other one, Cupid laid by his brand um, was... His brand was quenched in the water. So, However, Cupid got new fire in that last line. He got a new brand or whatever. Um, my mistress eyes. Okay, that makes sense. So again, going back to 154, she quenched the brand 
from Love's Fire took heat perpetual growing a bath healthful healthful remedy for men disease. So again, so the Cupid potentially being the more baser uh baser love um and then that interference from the virgin nymph and the cool pool cool pool um created that bath of more spiritual pure love which is supposed to be a again healthful remedy for diseased men to cure those sicknesses but i the servant of my mistress i came to love to um love for a cure and this by that and and this by that i prove love's fire heats water water cools not love okay yeah so again going back to the overall overarching story of him uh, falling in love with uh, her who is, is um uh frequently suited if yes to put it that way uh fell in love with her um like actual the pu the spiritual love not just the physical love um so fell in love came there for a cure to the spiritual love and this by that i prove love's fire heats water so So, okay, so I think love being the the physical love, that love fire heats water, that physical love can grow into that um, spiritual love, but that, hang on, that spiritual love cannot. Cannot cool the other one? Heats water. Water cools not love. I feel like I feel like it goes the other way, though. I think my entire um, theory kind of goes <laughs> goes out the window then. And prove against reality this only true. So it might it might be the other way around. I f it almost seems like it might be the other way around where the Cupid brand is more the spiritual love and then the pool will uh, turned into and I could be thinking about this way too like black and white um, but yeah just going back down to the bottom so loves uh, so the fire of love will go with spiritual love heats um, the uh, the ba the the baser love, but that base love does not. Um, it does not. What's the word? Satisfy that need of the spiritual love. That makes a lot more sense. Ferris votary, which many legions of true hearts had warmed, so the general of hot desire was sleepy by a virgin hand disarmed. Which from love's fire took heat perpetual, growing a bath and healthful remedy. And maybe it's just kind of both. It's both and then it's kind of separated. I'm not sure. That one was a little bit weird. You plan on writing poems about a fictional messiah figure. Maybe you need to read Shakespeare. It, it honestly, it what it what it he is. He, it, it is very good. Um this last section was somewhat questionable. <laughs> but, hello, by the way. Excellent. That sounds awesome. Uh, but it is. the. It, it is a fun thing to go through. It's interesting going through the different... What's the word? Uh, I, I don't... I, I, I can't think right now, apparently. How... how and again, it wasn't like necessarily like the speech of the day, but just different. It it doesn't matter because writing is something somewhat separate from speech. So um, yeah, just seeing how things are formed, and I do. I just I love words, so I let. It, it's kind of it's a it's like a painting, kind of. 
for me. So his name is Yesai. He's a Jesus-like figure. He gets his power from the sun, kind of like Superman. Excellent. Very cool. Nice. So you said you plan on. So have you started at all? Um, And yeah, so I guess I would recommend the uh, first. So we did. We just finished the Sonnets of Shakespeare. Um, apart from this, I'm not quite sure what the passionate pilgrim is but we shall see um if we go into that but i w I, w I would the, f the first ones the first ones are <laughs> a lot more it, it did the la the, la the last section was a lot more mature a lot darker uh it, it is the dark lady um sonnets but and they were they're just kind of they're just kind of, they're kind of sad and a little bit, um, yeah, Qu questionable content in certain respects. So you haven't written anything, just studying to write first. Okay. Sounds good. Excellent. Sounds good. I love that. I'm happy about that. So is it, are they going to be interwoven, interconnected? And why did you choose poetry for it? You need a backstory without completely breaking your character. What what do you mean? What is the issue? Need a backstory without completely breaking your character. I'm not sure what you mean, and I would be I would be happy to attempt to help if you Oh, okay. So Sorry. I I I'm I'm going to ask you all sorts of questions. So are you writing strictly just poetry or is the poetry going to be um, separate from like a main story kind of like how like Tolkien has his like main stories and then he's got other um, offshoot poetic things. He's an Illumin, the first of his kind. He was once human, but you don't know how you're going to, going to make him become an Illumin. Interesting. Okay. Well, I guess... I would start with how is how how do the illumins become illumins in the first place? So hmm hmm so and I and I guess it would it would it would depend on like are they are illumins like aliens or are they just uh, I guess superhuman or um so I, I guess I'd throw out there if you wanted potential well I don't know how much reading you want to do uh I read a couple of web serials I don't even know when Worm and Ward it's the Parahuman series and that was super super interesting it's super long but the whole premise is very interesting. Um, how the superhumans became superhuman. And you could potentially take um, inspiration from that. Uh, but Illumins are superhuman. Okay. So are you just worried about how um, he is going to become an Illumin? Or how they become superhuman in general? And is it, a, I, I, I do, I'm a very analytical person, so I, just stop me, stop me if I'm getting too far into things and asking too many questions. Right, how are you going to make him become superhuman? Okay, so, and that is, um, okay, sounds good, I'm glad. So, Are you interested in reading the parahuman stuff at all? Because then I won't spoil it for you. And I'll just give you sort of general um, thoughts. Um, I, I will. I'll start with the general stuff. So, it, uh, okay. And, and that's a, sorry. So, and that's a thing. So for the illu illumins, uh, general thoughts. Sounds good. Um, so for the illu Illumins. Uh, um, 
are is it a so you do you got you have different uh ways of okay it depends on what um yeah it, it is you're gonna have to figure out if you want it to be like an internal thing if it's like just per person like the whole i guess go with like the x-men like mutant dna sort of thing I, I don't know all the specific specifics of that so i'm sorry if i get things wrong um if it's like a mutant dna that just needs to be um flipped or it could be an external force um but then you would have to figure out if how far you want to go into that. And, and, and again, I, I, I'm not sure how much spoilage. I'm trying to think, I, I'm trying to think of an, a, a different one that has like a similar. So yeah. So like, are you, do, do you want it to be, Mutant DNA could be cool. Okay, sure. And and so then and then you do you got to figure out what is it triggered by. And 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 it depends on how far you want to go into it too because um there you don't have to explain everything unless you want to. Um I'm just trying to think. Because you want it to center around the one character, correct? Because then, because then it would, it would, uh, you'd probably want it to keep more into the internal thing and not have external factors so much. Hmm. crucified like Jesus was but somehow he activates something from him being the son and he becomes a god interesting <laughs> okay um activate something from him okay so and then yeah there's your sort of like I guess trigger moment for um trigger moment for that that DNA and you and depending on how far you want to go into it um you You might not have to really explain where the mutant DNA comes from, <laughs> but you can if you want to, because um, it, if you wanted to get like that that really deep deep backstory, um, you could. But otherwise, you wouldn't need to. It's up to you. Yeah, well, it's at that point, it's whatever's gonna make the story work the best. So, yeah. Radiation does some weird stuff. Yeah, I I would think so. I would think so. <laughs> so yeah, that that would that would be a that would be a that would be a trigger, I guess. A proper trigger. Yeah, excellent. Very cool. Oh, I'll pop this back up. La da da da. Oi. And yes, I'm 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 going to I'm going to have to head out. Good luck with your story. Um it sound it sounds like an interesting undertaking, so I hope it goes well. Nukes are quite lame, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you do. You got you you got freedom to pick what you want and write how you want it, and yeah, it should be good. So um, that was that was the end of sh of the sonnets of Shakespeare, the traditional sonnets of Shakespeare. We'll see about the pilgrimage, the something pilgrimage, whatever it was. Uh, we'll figure that out. Um, and. Next time will be some sort of game. So Sunday will be a game of some sort. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. And then Tuesday we'll be flying again. And we'll figure out Thursday's reading um, at some point in there. Yeah, we'll figure it out. It'll be good. Have any on, ma'am? I assume good night. <laughs> I, I think, I hope. Um, you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, to whoever got lost and found their way here, found their way back. Thanks for being here. It's been fun. Uh, thanks for bearing with me <laughs> and the poems. 
And yeah, good luck on your story slash poems. And yeah, I uh, have a great whatever's gonna be for you. And oh, and um, yeah, if I've forgotten anything, I apologize. And yeah, so nice night. Okay, good. So thank you, thank you very much. You as well. Um, uh, yeah, so thanks. And bye. Thank <music> you.